So can, is there a way that we could uh, create more generic pretest test uh, task? So the idea is basically, um, uh, is for example, if you if you look up, uh, look upon these this 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 slide, here you see that you have an image. All these like different. Uh, why not we combine all these different pretext tasks, and basically uh, augment and a single image, the same very same image into different augmentations. But all these different augmentations are actually sync belong to the same image. So basically, we kind of learn that okay, all these augmentations are actually the same image. As compared to a different image, so basically, if you if you have like you take one image, you create different uh, augmentations, like you distort the image in, in various various manners, and you also you have you take another image with a completely different image, and then you come somehow create a way so so that you are able to learn the similarity among the same image, which which is also distorted, and like somehow uh, somehow able to ca characterize. The image which is completely different from the image which you are taking, uh, which is your uh, original image. So this is this this is actually the idea of contrastive representation learning. So the the idea is all these augmented images should have high similarity with your original uh, image, which we call super we could also call reference image, and it should have very low similarity to a completely different image, which is not an augmented one of the same image. So this, like, um, uh, we, we could see, for example, this image on the uh, on below. We could say it is a reference x image, and all the plus signs, like x plus x plus x plus x plus, are the augmented images. So we should say, okay, the similarity of x and x plus should be much higher than the x similarity of x x minus minus means the completely different image. So this is like the whole idea of, as as I told you, cont of contrastive representation learning. So here I would basically showcase one particular uh, one uh, state of the art um, or then state of the art uh, uh, method, which have be, which is really well cited in the literature actually, uh, which is uh, which is based on this simple concept, this uh, uh, exactly on the same idea, which is called the SIM CLR, which is simple contrastive learning. And here the idea is that we randomly sample a mini batch of n inputs x, so. Uh, to, to, to put it simple, let's say here the x represents a symbol image, image, and we apply two different augmentations to it, and then pass it to our th through a base encoder network, and then we have a linear uh, uh, linear um, uh, a linear model which also extracts out basically uses this the uh, the output from the in encoder and basically uh, compute the embedding from that. And then the, uh, the both the outputs from the both the augmentations, we pass this basically this this uh, main uh, encoder and the the projection head is basically more or less the same for the both the augmentations. And we try to maximize the predictions. For example, if I this x i and x j are the augmented images of the original x image, and z i and z j are the final predictions coming out of the projection head and prediction head. So basically, we want to maximize this agreement between z i and z j. So this is like the whole general idea. So and and how could we do this basically? So in in the paper they actually used quite a different augmentations. So basically, uh, like these are these are list of uh, ten different augmentations which they have actually used uh, to create. So basically, they randomly select one of the augmentation to create X I, another randomly selected uh, augmentation to select uh, to create X J, and then from there they compute X Z I and Z J and then try to maximize their agreement. So the the uh, the way they try to maximize this agreement is basically using the uh, um, this formulation actually. So they kind of define this similarity between z i and z j using the cosine similarity, which is given by this uh, equation, which is essentially kind of uh, kind of a normalized uh, a, a dot product basically, the kind of, and uh, we use this uh, uh, loss function, which is which is also actually in literature called the info and c e loss. Uh, so noise uh, contrastive estimation actually, and this is like the, how it, it it's essentially a softmax uh, classifier basically. Uh, uh, with, but here instead of only the logit values, we are using these similarity terms. So essentially, th this is a subtle difference in, in between. And also, uh, and the, the, basically, this the, when we apply this, so this basically gives us give the back the agreement between Z I and Z Js. 
So, and we the final loss here is computed across all positive pairs. That is that is between all the i and j and j and i because it it may or may not be commutative. The augmentations uh, and the uh, the prediction uh, prediction heads the the results coming from the prediction head. So this is like the how how, how the, the the general scheme of this CMCLR works. So if we if we look at the the main algorithm, so this is like uh, uh, listed here as a, in a pseudocode manner. So where basically we start with the uh, uh, we uh, sample a mini batch xk, and then from xk we draw two augmentations like uh, t uh, randomly uh, from t and uh, t dash are the two augmentations which we apply to the our, our inputs xk to and uh, from there on we feed it to the base encoder network and then do the prediction head and afterwards we get a, uh, a, a z, a z i and z j basically. And from ZI and ZJ, we compute the pairwise similarity and compute this in, in for, uh, info and ZE loss. And as a result, finally, once once this is done over a period of time, like after a few, uh, after the a number of iterations which we want, we want to keep, uh, we only keep the encoder network, this which is this F network, and throw, throw away the uh, away the prediction network. So basically, this encoder network F is actually our pre-trained model which we could use. To extract out the uh, good feature representations from any for for any uh, downstream application. So this is like uh, the learned SSL uh, uh, model. So if I uh, just show you these um, the the results with which we get for this uh, sim CLR, it's, it's it, they are like quite uh, quite surprisingly good actually. So here, if you see um, like this is like graph of with basically number of parameters on the x-axis and the top one accuracy on ImageNet uh, database. And if, if you see that the, in the supervised manner setting with 25 million parameters, we are getting around roughly around the accuracy around 77%. And the SIM CLR for the same number of parameters is able to achieve roughly around 60 or 69%. So which is which is which is very good actually. And but as we as we increase the number of parameters uh, in SIM CLR, uh, so I, uh, the, the accuracy uh, gradually increases. increases. And uh, uh, and basically here the this linear classifier is trained on the representations learned by the feature encoding using entire image uh, uh, in this in this particular uh, paper. So with this, I would like to conclude. So I would like to summarize. So the, what we have seen in this uh, basically video is uh, we saw how what a supervised learning is, how it is compared to self-supervised learning, what is general pipeline of self-supervised learning, and what are three different ways. Of evaluation uh, methods, for example, we could evaluate using k-nearest neighbors, a linear probing, or fine-tuning. And we saw a few examples of pretext tasks. And uh, I gave you an, an introduction to contrastive representation learning, where I uh, went into more detail into this algorithm, SimCLR. So thank you very much for listening, and have a nice day.